Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be painting an ocean beach scene and I'm going to go ahead and list the colors that we're going to be using. It will only be four colors, so it makes it kind of easy. And I'm going to go ahead and list them in the description box as well, along with the paint brushes that I'll be using. So I'm going to start off with making the sky. I'm taking a little bit of the phthalo blue, white, and I'm going to take a little bit of the raw sienna to kind of mute that blue just a little bit. So now we're going to go ahead and start mixing that color for the water. We're going to be using a mixture of the phthalo green, raw sienna, and phthalo blue. And you just keep mixing those colors until you end up with a nice dark color to put in the back farthest point of water there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and work on the farthest wave. You want it to be dark in color, so we're going to end up using those same exact colors that we just used, but even darker, so don't pick any white up on your brush. And just mix the phthalo blue, phthalo green, and raw sienna until it's even a darker color than what you had before. And you're just literally going to go back and forth in a straight line to create, create that. And as you come down, you are going to add a little bit more of white on your brush. To blend that out. As you are blending that down, sometimes you can even go ahead and do what I'm doing um, in a side sweeping motion to kind of form the shape of the wave. So now I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of raw sienna, some phthalo blue, and you want kind of like a dirty green color and you're gonna start scumbling on this paint color. This is where you're gonna have the white washed wave. And we're gonna be putting some highlights on this so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just go ahead and put the paint down on there. This is just the base layer and it's gonna be the shadow uh, for when we apply the white on the wave. Okay. 
I am gonna go ahead and start blocking in some of the lighter colors for the white foamy wave from where it's rolling over. And I am, don't go too light on this. Um, just go ahead and do that mixture that I had with the raw sienna, the white, and a little bit of that green that we used to block in the main part of that color. And all I'm doing with my flat brush, it's actually a flat angled brush that I'm using, but you can use whatever brush that you feel would be easiest for you. Uh, this is just, I'm just blotting it on. We're gonna go back through and detail this wave so it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly how you want it, just as so as long as we have something down there to start with. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start pulling the color down. It might, say, it might seem weird right now. Like I said, we are gonna go back through and really work more on this area. After I painted it the first time, like the first initial spot right in this area, I ended up going back to it quite a bit. So uh, what I really wanted to achieve in this painting was the effect of the reflection of the wave rolling over onto the actual water itself. So I wanted to go ahead and capture that in this painting. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull down. It's gonna act as if it's a reflection. And you don't, like I said, you don't have to get too detailed with this right now. We will go back through. So pulling down and very lightly, you can go back and forth with your brush. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just end up filling more of this water coming down with a bluer toned color, similar to what we had in the back water there. And I actually ended up going back through and bringing down that reflection even past this area. So don't put too much um, effort in this part. You know, this is just a base layer. Go ahead and just get that paint on there because we're gonna just keep adding those reflections in. But you do wanna have some variation within the colors. So maybe add like I just picked up some of that darker color that we had in the very back part of the ocean. You can go ahead and incorporate that um, or whatever colors that you want to do, really. I mean, you can do this painting with whatever colors you want. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start incorporating more of the raw sienna because it's getting closer up by the sand area. So I want it to be pretty, pretty much like a greenish color almost. Uh, I want that sand to be showing through that foreground water that we're gonna put in.
I'm at I'm moving up closer to the sand area so I'm gonna keep picking up more and more white on my brush and I'm gonna lay out the sand first and then we'll go ahead and put our white wash over and I'm taking a little bit of raw sienna I have the green and blue on my brush which is going to mute down that orangey tone in the raw sienna. And I'm just going to start applying that to the rest of the foreground area. So go ahead and just start blending that into the green that we have in there. So I'm going to go ahead and start incorporating my whitewash and I want to put a shadow color underneath where the 
front part of the whitewash is gonna go. So I took some phthalo green and phthalo blue and I'm just swiping it on there. And then I'm gonna take some white. I don't want bright white quite yet. I will go ahead at the very end and start blotting on some plain white highlight. I'm applying this with a small flat brush So when you're applying the whitewash, you want to try to do little squiggles and you kind of want them to go in some random areas. And I'm trying really hard to get the whitewash smaller and thinner back where it's farther, like where it's starting. And then when it starts washing up onto the sand, I'm making the whitewash a little bit thicker. And although it probably looks like I'm using straight white from the tube, I'm not. It's not as bright white as you may think it looks on this camera, but it's actually tinted with um, you know a little bit of that raw sienna mixture so um, we'll put the white highlights on at the end
So now that I've got some of the whitewash on and I've had time to let the other areas dry, I'm going to go start working on the farthest wave. So I've got phthalo green and phthalo blue, which was pretty much the mixture that we did for that top of the wave there. And I'm going to go ahead and start just making little squiggle patterns with my angled flat brush so you can kind of see some dimension in that wave. What's really gonna help your wave to become defined is like I said, by going through those side sweeping motions and trying to just get the feel of the wave and go with the curvature of the wave. So if you follow that method and you keep doing that throughout the wave, it'll end up looking really, really nice. And I'm just putting in some very distant waves back there with just the darker color on my brush. So now I'm picking up some white and I'm gonna go start putting some highlights in now. Just brush it on in between those waves and I'm almost using this as a color to blend those dark spots that I put in. You want them kind of blended out, not real pronounced because those are very distant ones. So just blend them out a little bit. You just want an impression of some distant waves. And now I'm going in the very distant water and darkening that area up just a tad and trying to straighten out my water line. Okay, so I've got that dark mixture on my brush and I didn't wash it, so I picked up some white and I'm going through and I'm just trying to put some highlights here and there throughout the wave. and I'm blending it out with my finger in between the darker spots that we put on. Okay, so now I'm picking up a lighter, 
color than what we have already put on the wave right here that's rolling over. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blot that on. I've got some blue, raw sienna, and green, but majority of it is white. And I'm just blotting it on in random areas, but uh, mostly I'm trying to concentrate on more of the bottom part of that wave to have the white wash. And I'm using, again, my angled flat brush. And then I'm going back through and pulling some of that reflection down again. Want, I want to go ahead and put in a shadow where the wave is curling over. And I've got a very small round brush now that I'm just trying to dabble on underneath where we are going to have that white wash at. And eventually I'm gonna go through and put it in again A lot of the way that I paint is kind of like I'm testing the waters. I'm seeing what I like, seeing what I don't like. If I like something, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and come back to it once it's dry to even bring it out even more. So, you know, I do go back and forth a lot with my paintings, but I just feel like, you know, I there's a there's a point in time in which I'm satisfied and Sometimes it takes a few times of me going back and forth before I can actually put my paintbrush down. I think we all as painters kind of experience that though. So I had to let my painting sit for a little bit so I could let it dry. So I'm coming back to it and going to start working on some of those white water wash up in the foreground area and I've switched to a smaller brush now. I'm not using that small flat brush. I'm using my small round brush.
So now that I've added some whitewash more down below, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling down more of a reflection. I'm using an assortment of blue, the dark blue and the white on my brush in certain areas because I want some of that shadow area to reflect also. The shadow underneath that wave, I want it to reflect onto that water. So pulling that down is just fine. And then I'm gonna go through and do some lines across. And you can even come out further down and start doing little swipes down as well. So just picking up some more white, bringing it down underneath where the whitewash is most present on your painting. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of the darker blue. Pull that down as well. Okay, I just still feel like the part underneath the wave isn't as dark as I'd like, so I'm going through and putting that in there as well. I think that having a painting that is in sunset colors similar to this with the reflection showing on that water would be really, really pretty with like a wave coming down and it's the evening with some pretty pinks and purples and maybe like a gold color. I don't know, that might have to be in the works soon too. Okay, so I've got my angled flat brush and I'm doing side sweeping motions and I'm taking straight white and doing little lines in a horizontal motion across the sand or the water, I should say. Just pick up a little bit of that white and start doing just little lines here and there. And even where you put those little lines, you can kind of drag it down a little bit. Like where you have the reflection, where you pull it down, you can do that too off of those little things that you put in that are horizontal. So now I just really want to bring out this whitewash even more. I've got my small round brush again and I'm taking straight white right now pretty much. And I'm squiggling it on. As you can see, just wiggle, wiggle your hand back and forth, twisting the brush from side to side or as you're moving your hand side to side. And like I said, try to concentrate on getting those squiggles a little bit thinner up towards that part closer to the white wave.
So I'm gonna go ahead and start making a mixture of primarily water, a little bit of raw sienna, and some blue. And it is going to be a glaze, basically. As you can see, it's almost acting as watercolor. I had to wait for this part to dry pretty much before I could do this. You can still see the whitewash underneath. This is just a glazing. So you're using the majority of it as water. It's gonna be literally like watercolor. You can see it kind of dripping down. Just take your finger and kind of rub it in. I wanted some shadow areas and I didn't want to completely cover up the whitewash. So I decided to just do kind of like a glazing effect on this. And then I'm gonna go back over it and put the whitewash over it again. So now I'm back to working on the reflection and as you can see I've just taken my brush and put in some more horizontal lines and I'm dragging it down here and there just to keep really bringing out that reflection. As I said I want this to be the main focal point of the painting. So just keep working on that until you're satisfied with it. It took a few layers for me before I was pretty happy with it because I wanted it to keep drying in between and then I wanted to go back through and keep adding more and more layers. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start just wiggling on some more of the whitewash over this shadowed area that I put in. Now that it's dried, I'm gonna just, like I said, go over that glaze that we put on. It just kind of gives your painting some more depth when you do the glazing effect. So I'm gonna just keep working on the whitewash and then that's pretty much the last step that we have. Thank you guys so much for watching. Here's the finished product. And if you like what you saw, make sure to go ahead and click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell to be alerted of future videos.